the story of the Samaritan woman. A classic, some would say. It's well known by regular churchgoer that sometimes we don't pay attention anymore. Because we think we understand everything and we know everything about the story. We know and we have been told that the Jews and the Samaritan did not like each other for various uh, reasons. And the gospel, according to John, says that Jesus, on his way back home, had to go through Samaria, Samaria sorry, and stop by a village. It's noon. The disciples go to get food. Uh, it's hot day. Jesus is thirsty. And then he asks a woman to give him some water. And we've been told, haha, there's something strange here. That's something not supposed to be because there's a woman at the well at noontime. And we have been told that women back then draw their water in the morning when it was cooler so there must be a reason why this woman is there at this time you know she must be rejected she must be an outcast she must be shot by the other women that that's something wrong with this woman and we say that even if we can think of top of her head so many reasons why she has to go back to the well like she ran out of water sooner than expected or she broke the the jar she brought the water and she need a new jar of water or she had an expected gas or i can go on and on and on but no no, no. there must be something wrong we say and then we go to verse 18 that says you have had your right you have had five husbands and the one you have now is not your husband and we say ha ha she's a woman of little virtue that needs to recant for her sin and we say that even if we know that not that long ago and today also multiple marriages are not so uncommon and and there's many reasons why she had, might have many marriages. There's the spouse die or deserted. Uh, I don't know. She's poor and she has to live in this man, rich man's house to, to survive. We don't know. But no, we assume. We assume she must be a whore. She must be a prostitute. That's who she is. And we say that completely forgetting that the gospel according to John, the fourth gospel, is not necessarily chronological, is not about event, but it's a text full of metaphor, full of symbols, full of image. Only last week in a lectionary, we had the story of Nicodemus, who come by night to see Jesus. He does not understand him. Jesus, the light of the world, He's still in the night. And the Samaritan women meet Jesus at noon, the time of the day there's the most light, and she sees he's a prophet. But no, we stay a literal interpretation because somehow we it makes us comfortable. Because somehow we want to box and define someone. Maybe with a few characteristic, might they be true or not, does not seem to matter. We want to place that woman in that box. Probably the Samaritan woman had baggage, like most of us have baggage from her past. She knew all the rules about Samaritan Jews, men, women, not supposed to interact. Nevertheless, she sees an opportunity. And she take it to talk about faith, about religion, about spirituality. And she make an amazing discovery. And most likely about her, about her faith, about her spiritual journey. And when the disciple come back and start to discuss if it was appropriate for Jesus to talk with a woman, well, she leave everything, go back to the village, 
and convince all about Jesus. In fact, she becomes the first missionary in the Gospels. That woman that was criticized because she was not supposed to talk to men, that woman that was criticized because she was not supposed to teach, that was, yeah, that woman is an example for all of us. And it's a great reminder, that story, not to be constrained by social construct, assumption for the past, assumption for today. Jesus is able to see her for who she is, and she's able to see Jesus for who he is. And it's through this encounter that many came to believe. And that's the key of the story. How we can go over and lose ourselves in conversation, sometimes like the disciple, and nothing happens. And then, when you see each other, when you engage each other faithfully and honestly, something happens. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching. I'm Stéphane Vermette. I remain the lectionary man. And until next time, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.